it's Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com where we instantly improve the lives for families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can make informed decisions, have peace of mind, real power, real control and so that you can influence decision making fast even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. This is another episode of Your Questions Answered and in last week's episode I answered another question from one of our readers. The question last week was My brother is in intensive care with cardiac arrest, abdominal sepsis, ventilated and in an induced coma. Will he need a tracheostomy? You can check out the answer to last week's question by clicking on the link below this video. In this week's episode of Your Questions Answered, I want to answer another frequently asked question from one of from our readers and the question this week is how to wean off ECMO. So let's look at this question in more detail. Today's episode of Your Questions Answered is a little bit more technical in nature compared to other episodes. But more and more families in intensive care want to know about ECMO and they have specific questions about it and I want to answer specific questions with specific answers. More and more critically ill patients in intensive care require ECMO for either heart failure or lung failure which is also called ARDS. If you haven't heard about ECMO and you don't know what, it's, what it is, please check out our general section about ECMO. Again, I put some links in the written version of this blog below the video. I have also written a blog and done a video about how long can a critically ill patient stay on ECMO. Use the search function on our website to search for this article or click on the link again in the written version of this blog on this website to the article and video how long can a critically ill patient stay on ECMO if you want to know about that. So let's just quickly look at ECMO in general. ECMO stands for extra corporal membrane oxygenation and it replaces the function of the heart or the lungs in critically ill patients. You may have heard me explain before that all major organs except the brain of the body in a critically ill patient in intensive care can be controlled at least temporarily. ECMO can do that in heart failure and in lung failure or ARDS. It can control and take over the function of the heart or the function of the lung for a period of time. ECMO for heart failure is also classified as VA ECMO and ECMO for lung failure or ARDS is classified as VV ECMO. Again, for more general information about ECMO and the exact differences between VA ECMO and VV ECMO, please check out our general ECMO section. And again, I'll put a link below this video. What's important for you and your family to know that if ECMO for either heart failure or lung failure can't be weaned, there are two to three other options as well that you need to know about. Sometimes intensive care teams may or may not be transparent about those options and therefore I want to bring them to you in this video today. So number one, in VV ECMO for lung failure or ARDS, if ECMO can't be weaned because of the lungs not recovering, ECMO can be a bridging therapy towards a lung transplant. I.e. I have seen some critically ill patients in intensive care going on ECMO for lung failure or ARDS for a few days up to two weeks and in one case I remember for less than 24 hours before a lung transplant became available. There is a risk that if VV ECMO is commenced for lung failure and ARDS and the lung transplant is not becoming available, that ECMO might be futile. And futile means that it's to no benefit of the patient and the critically ill patient might pass away. Again, I put a link below this video to 
lung transplants as well so you can find out more about lung transplants number two in VA ECMO for heart failure if ECMO can't be weaned because of the heart not recovering and remaining decompensated ECMO can be a bridging therapy to a ventricular assist device which is also called VAD and it can also be used as a bridging to a heart transplant patients requiring a heart transplant tend to require more preparation and time also because of donor hearts not being as readily available as donor lungs therefore a VAD is a good device to buy time and prepare patients for a heart transplant many patients can even go home on a VAD and await a heart transplant at home again more info about VADs and heart transplants with some links that I put in the video uh, in the written version of this blog below the video now let's look at weaning ECMO so again first let's look at weaning VV ECMO for lung failure or ARDS patients requiring VV ECMO for lung failure or ARDS are usually mechanically ventilated with a breathing tube or an endotracheal tube or a tracheostomy however whilst being on VV ECMO the support from the ventilator and the breathing tube tends to be reduced to a bare minimum because of the ECMO machine regulating the gas exchange that normally takes place in the lungs therefore by gradually reducing the pump flow of the ECMO machine and by gradually reducing the oxygen supply of the ECMO machine the support on the ventilator will be gradually increased and assessed for its effectiveness during VV ECMO for lung failure or ARDS the support from the ventilator and the breathing machine tends to be reduced so that the lungs can rest and heal if a reduction of the flow from the ECMO machine can be adequately replaced by the ventilator and all the vital signs and parameters stay within normal limits ECMO is ready to be discontinued this will be done by assessing the ventilation parameters as well as arterial blood gases to assess the oxygen and carbon dioxide in the blood as well as by doing chest x-rays once the ventilator can provide adequate gas exchange and that means oxygen going in and carbon dioxide going out for a critically ill patient in lung failure or ARDS ECMO is ready to be removed in essence once the lungs can adequately start fun functioning functioning again with the support from the ventilator ECMO can be removed it is very important and critical to make thorough assessments before removing VV ECMO for lung failure and ARDS because it's high risk putting ECMO back in if removal of ECMO fails in the first place let's look at number two weaning VA ECMO for heart failure when weaning VA ECMO for heart failure formal weaning studies need to be performed before removing VA ECMO the simple reason for formal weaning studies is that intrinsic or native heart function must be assessed first again just like in VV ECMO for lung failure ECMO is taking over the function of the heart in severe heart failure critically ill patients have minimal to no cardiac output and their ejection fraction which is a test that determines how well the heart pumps which with each beat so ejection fraction is minimal in heart failure therefore native or intrinsic heart function is minimal and without ECMO the patient with heart failure is at high risk of dying normally in heart failure and VA ECMO inotropic me medications such as dibutamine, milrinone, levosimendan, noradrenaline and or adrenaline are given to support contractility of the heart and also to increase blood pressure in VA in VA ECMO for heart failure the procedure to wean off VA ECMO needs to follow a few steps first perform an echocardiogram which is an ultrasound of the heart also often a toe is performed now a toe stands 
for transesophageal echocardiogram and it's an alternative way to perform an echocardiogram just on the outside of the heart. A toe is basically a specialized probe containing an ultrasound transducer at its tip and it's passed into the patient's esophagus to perform an ultrasound of the heart closer to the source. The next step is to wean the pump flow of the ECMO machine and find out if native and intrinsic heart function is improving and maintaining a physiological and life-sustaining cardiac output. And the cardiac output is the measurement of the amount of blood that is pumped out of the heart in one minute. Also, ABGs or arterial blood gases to assess adequate oxygen and carbon dioxide levels in the blood is also what needs to happen. Next, inotropes such as dobutamine, milrinone, levosimendin, adrenaline and or noradrenaline need to be reduced. Again, another assessment of ejection fraction with an echocardiogram or a toe. Also, lung ventilation must be increased. This is similar to VV ECMO. If weaning of VA ECMO for heart failure fails, again, a bridging therapy to a VAD is often possible. A VAD, again that's a ventricular assist device, might buy time and prepare for a heart transplant. Just like in VV ECMO for lung failure or ARDS, premature removal of ECMO therapy for heart failure is highly risky and can be lethal because it's high risk putting ECMO back in if removal of ECMO fails in the first place. Also, as a side note, in VV ECMO and in VA ECMO, very rarely are not patients, very rarely are patients not being ventilated. So that means every time a patient is on ECMO, whether it's VV or VA ECMO, they're almost always be ventilated. In very few instances are patients not being ventilated. I hope this clarifies and now you know how ECMO is being weaned. Any other questions? please send them to support at intensivecarehotline.com. So, how can you become the best advocate for your critically ill loved one, make informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence quickly whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care? You get to that all-important feeling of making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence when you Download your free Instant Impact Report now by entering your email below. In your free Instant Impact Report, you learn quickly how to make informed decisions, get peace of mind, real power and real control and how you can influence decision making fast whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Your free Instant Impact Report gives you in-depth insight that you must know whilst your loved one is critically ill or is even dying in intensive care. Sign up and download your free Instant Impact Report now by entering your email below. In your free Instant Impact Report you learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In your free report, you will also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions. Discover the many competing interests in intensive care. And how your critically ill loved one's treatment may depend on those competing interests. How to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability even if your loved one is dying. You get five mind-blowing tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence in your situation. You'll get real world examples that you can easily adapt to your and your critically ill loved one's situation. How to stop being intimidated by the intensive care team and how you will be seen as equals. You'll get crucial behind the scenes insight so that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care and how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care and it's not what you think. 
Thank you for tuning into this week's Your Questions Answered episode and I'll see you again in another update next week. Make sure you also check out our blog section for more tips and strategies or simply send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. Or you can call me, find phone numbers on the contacts tab. Also, check out our ebook section where you get more ebooks, videos and audio recordings and where you can also get one-on-one -on -one counseling and consulting with me via Skype, over the phone, via email, by clicking on the products tab. This is Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com and I'll see you again next week in another